All right, let's get started with lesson six, standard enthalpy changes. All right, now the enthalpy changes uh, for a reaction depends really on the conditions under which the reaction occurs. So for instance, if the temperature pressure, the concentrations of solutions all change or vary, then it's going to affect the delta H value the amount of potential energy change that occurs for a system. So often we need to state what conditions the reaction is occurring at. Now we have special conditions that are known as standard conditions. Okay, Standard conditions are specific conditions that uh, when an experiment is run to determine the potential energy changes, delta H changes, uh, these are pretty standard uh, laboratory conditions. Now, these standard conditions for enthalpy changes, they're going to be listed below in your notes here. We'll just take a look at them. For instance, standard conditions means that the temperature will always be at 298 Kelvin or 25 degrees C, a pressure of one atmosphere or 101.3 kilopascals, all concentrations are one molar, and all elements are in their normal standard states solids, liquids, and gases at 25 degrees C and 1 atmosphere of pressure. When you run a reaction under these conditions, it, these are known as our standard conditions. Now, to indicate that standard conditions are, being, uh, are occurring, we often write with delta H a little sign called a knot. This not sign indicates that we are running our reaction at these standard conditions. If that not is not there, then uh, the conditions of the reaction are something different. Okay. Now we also can run reactions at STP conditions. We've talked about STP. STP, standard temperature and pressure, are not the same thing as standard conditions. Standard temperature is zero degrees Celsius and pressure is one atmosphere so there are it's it's different than standard conditions alright throughout this lecture video we're gonna focus our attention on running our reactions as standard conditions make sure you know what these standard conditions are alright so we're gonna move to a new uh, topic called standard enthalpy of formations by definition, which you need to be very familiar with, standard enthalpy of formation is the enthalpy change that occurs when one mole, and I'm going to really highlight mole because a lot of students leave that out in their definition. So the enthalpy change that occurs when one mole of a substance is formed, so made or formed, from its elements in their standard states under standard conditions. What we're saying here is, is that if we want to create a compound or a molecule, then we do so from the elements that make up that compound under standard conditions. And this is known as the standard heat of formation. Now, standard heat of formation is often symbolized as delta H, F, F for formation, and since it's under standard conditions, we have to use the not. Okay? And that will equal some value. Okay? Some value. And that value will be in kilojoules per mole. Just like most of our delta H values are. Alright? Now, one thing to make note of. That the standard enthalpy change of formation for an element is always zero. So all elements have zero heats of formations, or standard enthalpy of formations, meaning the fact that elements are not created through chemical reactions, but through nuclear reactions. Therefore, they don't have an enthalpy change. So it's always zero. Remember that. Do not forget that. Okay? So I have some examples here, some equations. So we have liquid water being formed, and... Of course, according to our definition, we can only form one mole of water. So we're going to form that one mole of water out of its elements. Hydrogen, which is H2, 
which is diatomic, and um, it's a gas. And then oxygen, which is also diatomic, O2, and is also gas in its standard conditions or standard states. Now, because we need to balance this equation, and we can only have one mole of water formed, it would require one mole of hydrogen and a half a mole of O2 to form one mole of water. In this case, when we're using standard enthalpy of formations, it is okay to use fractions as coefficients. That is fine. So the heat of formation value uh, forming one mole of water is negative 285.8 kilojoules. All right? Now let's do another example here. Let's uh, create methane, one mole of it. Methane is composed of carbon and hydrogen gas. And so we write the elements down in their standard states. We balance the reaction knowing that we can only form one mole of methane gas. That would take one mole of carbon and two moles of hydrogen gas. The energy output that we would get is a negative 700 or negative 74.9 kilojoules. That would be the change in potential energy and the amount of heat that would be lost by the system when we form a mole of methane gas. Okay? So let's try another one. Alright? So we have the the problem here says write the standard enthalpy of formation for a reaction of ethanol. Okay, so ethanol is our uh, compound that we're going to write an equation for. Now, you're going to have to do this on your own. Write an equation for heat of formation or standard enthalpy of formation. So, um, let's, we know that ethanol is made up of elements of carbon in the solid state plus hydrogen. Hydrogen is diatomic and it's a gas in its standard state plus oxygen which is also diatomic. All of this to create C2H5OH in standard state so we can only create one mole of it. So we need to balance the equation based on only forming one mole of our uh, product here. So that would require two moles of carbon. That would require us six moles of hydrogen. So overall if I Put a 3 there, that should give us 6 moles of hydrogen, because 3 times 2 is 6. And we only need 1 mole of oxygen. We got 2 moles on this side, so I'm going to use a half a mole here, and that will give me uh, 1 mole of oxygen on my reactant side and a mole of oxygen on my product side. All right. So that's the equation for the standard enthalpy of formation for a mole of ethanol. Now, I just need to write in the value, the delta H of formation for this, under standard conditions, is equal to negative 278 kilojoules per mole, per mole of ethanol made. And that's essentially how you do it. All right, now, why are standard enthalpy of formation values so critical? Why are they so important? Why do we need to study them? Well, it's because we can use standard enthalpy, enthalpy formation values to help us to calculate a delta H of a overall reaction using this equation here. Very similar to the bond enthalpies that we looked at in our last lesson, lesson uh, five. So here, what we find is, is that the delta H of formation values for the products and we take the sum of them, that's what the sigma again is, the sum of the delta H of formation of the products minus the sum of the delta H of formation values for the reactants, that will give us the delta H for an overall chemical reaction. So how can we apply this equation? We have some problems here. So here's the question. Determine the standard enthalpy of formation, or sorry, Determine the standard enthalpy change for the combustion of ethanol by using the following standard enthalpy of formation values. So here I have a t uh, basically our chemical reaction. 
And it's asking us to find the delta H of this reaction. And we're not going to use calorimetry. And we're not going to use bond enthalpies. Instead, we're going to use the heat of formation values that are listed in this table here. So using our equation prior, we learned that by taking the sum of the heat of formation values of the products minus the sum of the heat of formation values of the reactants, we should get our delta H of reaction value. So let's practice this. So our products are carbon dioxide and water. So we have delta H of the reaction under standard conditions, we should say standard conditions here, is equal to 2 times, because we got 2 moles of CO2, 2 times um, a negative 394 plus, because we got to take the sum of um, 3 moles of water, which is a negative 286. And we got to subtract, these are our products, we got to subtract our products from now our reactants. So we have one mole of ethanol, which is negative 278. Now we need to add it to oxygen, but oxygen is an element. And what did we say earlier about the heat of formation value for elements? Well, they're zero. So we'd essentially add zero to this, and that would be our reactants. So when we add up all this together, we should get, so if we add up our delta H, or our heats of formation values for our products, subtracted from our reactants, we should get negative 1368 kilojoules per mole. Alright? So that's how we do it. Well, let's do another one. Determine the standard enthalpy change for a reaction for the following equation. Okay? So here we go again. Here's our equation. Here's our delta H of formation values in the table. Um, and let's do our reactants, or sorry, our products first. Iron is an element, so it would be zero. So the only thing we have to worry about is CO2. So the delta H of the reaction at standard conditions is equal to uh, two moles of carbon dioxide, which is negative 394, okay? Two moles of it, which I got. Uh, and we're gonna subtract that from our reactants now. Now graphite is an element of carbon. So it also is zero enthalpy of formation value. So we don't have to worry about that one either. So then we're gonna take one mole of iron oxide, multiply that by one, negative one one eight. So our products minus our reactants should give us a delta H of reaction standard conditions of positive 330 kilojoules per mole. All right. Let's do one more example problem. All right. So we have our reaction here. We have our delta H of formation values in our table. All right, so we're going to take our products again. So delta H of reaction. Products, uh, let's start with water. We have two moles of water, which is negative 286. Add that to... Uh, two moles of SO2, which is negative 296. There's our products. We're going to subtract it from our reactants. Oxygen is zero because it's an element. So we 
two times, so two moles of H2S is negative 20. There's our reactants. So delta H of the reaction must equal a negative 100, no, 1124 kilojoules per mole when we finish the math, okay? So that's all there is to it, to using standard enthalpy of formation values, which should be in a table like so. And just use that, plug it into the equation, and you should be able to find the delta H of the reaction. So this is a third way in order to find the delta H of the reaction. The first was calorimetry, which we learned in lesson number four. Number two was bond enthalpies, which we learned in lesson five. And now using heats of formation values, which is in lesson number six. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. So those are three ways to do it. Uh, that's it for this lecture video. Uh, make sure you study the notes very well and prepare a quiz on this. Uh, be able to do the calculations um, on a quiz and on the test. And uh, that is it for this lecture video.